it's my great honor for me to introduce Dr. Kenji Araki to give us such an interesting and important talk. Usually I don't have to read things out, but um, his bio was just so rich, I, I can, cannot handle it just by remembering <laughs> everything, right? So forgive me. And Kenji-san studied um, electronics, uh, electronics at uh, Kyoto University, right. and then worked for Toshiba and uh, Daido Steel. He received his PhD degree at uh, Nagoya Institute of uh, Technology and was a visiting um, researcher at Toyota Technological Institute, where he became a Japanese um, um, authority in CPV, concentrated photovoltaics, and VIPV, um, vehicle introduced uh, integrated yes. photovoltaics. And in particular, um, he knows um, solar cars inside out. If you know the very famous uh, Toyota's prototype Puris car, that was very fancy, expensive, and, the, and also efficient, can be self-sustainable, be running on the street. And Dr. Araki is a major contributor to that amazing project. And now he was appointed as distinguished professor at the University of uh, Miyazaki from 2020. And Dr. Araki is also the IEC TC82 PD600 VIPV standardization project leader and the WG7, which is CPV yes. Carminia. Um, it's a great timing as well because we are still celebrating the great achievement of SunSwift on the most recent uh, solar race car competition. And now today we have um, Dr. Kenji Araki to tell us what we have to do in order to be able to see the solar cars everywhere in the street how, what uh, pathways yes. and the challenges we may have in order to commercialize um, this amazing thing. Yep, we're yes. looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Oya, Ponyo. <laughs> and uh, let me start the, uh, today's talk. Uh, the title is Pathway for Fair and Scientific Rating to Solar Cars. And the uh, two keywords, fair and scientific, are really important and crucial uh, for standardization. And we respect, always respect uh, these two words, that we have a big uh, responsibility uh, to raise the industry, especially new PV devices in the market. So again, uh, you may remember uh, several uh, new PV devices disappeared in the market in a few years. Uh, because uh, possibly because the uh, cost issues and uh, other possibility is the uh, performance ratio or energy yield was not sufficient uh, for the user expected. And the standardization uh, to promote this kind of the fair and scientific labeling and scientific rating for the new products. And so uh, whether the VIPB industry uh, sustains or survives or killed partially depends on our activities. So uh, PT600 team uh, doing the uh, standardization of the uh, VIPB is now working hard, uh, targeting that we will publish several standards in 2026. So uh, let me explain the overall uh, process, overall structure of the uh, standard. Uh, typically, uh, PV standards consist of three bodies. One is testing. Testing must be reproducible among testing laboratories. So the test result in Australia should be the same uh, that of the uh, Singapore or China. And uh, this is based on so, uh, some kind of protocol of the testing, how the uh, testers and the solar simulators will be maintained and controlled and uh, some kind of the rules of the testing. So this kind of the, uh, rules uh, make uh, the test result reproducible uh, over uh, 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 worldwide. The second one is the uh, uh, performance in outdoor. Again, uh, indoor tests uh, should be accurate 
and reproducible, but it is not always the exact condition of the outdoor operation. That, so as you know, uh, if you work for the PV, they, they will know very well about this, some kind of differences. So uh, uh, that's, uh, the work for us as sanitation people to make some kind of rule or some make kind of the uh, uh, formula equations uh, or some kind of the corrections if necessary. Uh, and these I mean, uh, corrections and formula should be transparent and simple so that everyone, every citizen uh, will be able to I mean, validate uh, the real performance of the product. Then we will take some kind of the, uh, uh, trust uh, by users. And the third one is the value. And uh, uh, PV, new PV uh, may be funded by subsidiary or some kind of carbon offset uh, issues. So uh, we will have to uh, clarify the quantitative value of the products. So for example, uh, so energy yield, annual energy yield VRPB may be uh, something something in Sydney and something something in Adelaide. This value should be backed by a scientific and fair uh, calculation, the fair I mean, uh, uh, estimations of the uh, energy rating method. So uh, we should be always I mean, uh, scientific and always fair, not to I mean, uh, exclude uh, new technologies and uh, 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 compare uh, every product and every I mean, technology in the eco scale. So in this sense, that me, uh, we, uh, I am now presenting, uh, representing the uh, standardization people. But I have to say, uh, there are many other contributors behind the curtain. And again, uh, standardization should be done by voluntary contribution and anonymous contributions by scientists and engineers. So uh, please, I mean, imagine many peoples, not the ghost is standing behind me. So uh, that in detail, uh, we'll discuss about the uh, impact by the curved surface performance. And again, most of the equations and the models and measurement is based on the assumption that the PV panel is flat. And this is not true to the BIPV uh, because the most of the uh, car roof is curved and three-dimensionally curved, double curved. So that the uh, uh, some kind of the uh, common sense of the uh, PB uh, modeling and PB measurement cannot be applied to the uh, VIPB. So uh, testing with reproducibility is a kind of challenging. And another one is, I mean, uh, PB uh, is, uh, VIPB is surrounded by many shading objects. So uh, we do not ask drivers always uh, expose the car in the uh, no, uh, non-shading area. So uh, they sometimes I mean, go uh, under the uh, underpass or sometimes go uh, uh, try to I mean, park in the, uh, uh, under the tree to avoid I mean, uh, uh, temperature rise uh, of the car. But uh, we have to accept. We have to accept this kind of situation and rate the power output and energy yield. And also, uh, partial shading will be the uh, real threat uh, for the VIPB. So uh, VIPB, the uh, uh, shadow of the VIPB may be power cables and trees. So uh, uh, a lot of uh, small shadows uh, affect the uh, PV performance, uh, leading to some kind of mismatching, uh, massive mismatching loss. And we have to uh, characterize and uh, uh, figure out that kind of the impact. So let me uh, proceed. So why? Why VIPV behaves differently? And why VIPV needs a new standard? So let me uh, start with the uh, uh, curved issues. And then again, uh, entire uh, PV models, almost entire PV models and measurement was made based on the assumption PV panels are flat. But if we look at the uh, curved PV module, so at first, uh, uh, we have to consider that the uh, uh, curved PB received the uh, uh, sunlight from less aperture area. And please remember, 
the uh, input energy to the PV panel is the product of aperture area and irradiance. So what square meter multiplied by square meter uh, leading to what? So reduction of the aperture will reduce uh, the total input uh, to the uh, PV panel. So this is one of the reasons why the uh, curved PV always performs less than the flat PV. And another uh, significant I mean, uh, aspect is the mismatching loss. For example, uh, uh, solar cells in this part receive more sunlight than the solar cell uh, uh, here uh, because of the local cosine loss and self, uh, self shading effect. So we have to consider uh, these, I mean, uh, non ideal and non symmetrical uh, factor uh, affecting the uh, PV performance. And again, uh, typical uh, PV calculation is based on the assumption that uniform hemispherical uh, sky. So the uh, scattered sunlight is uniform without, no, uh, without any shadows. However, uh, PV in motion or PV anywhere, uh, like uh, solar EV, received non-uniform uh, and frequently shading uh, sunlight, shading sunlight, and uh, affected uh, some kind of complicated I mean, uh, inter-relationship uh, 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 to the uh, non-prana and moving. So uh, turning the car sub, uh, uh, abruptly reduces the uh, uh, solar input because of the, this kind of uh, non-symmetrical. Uh, 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 performance. So uh, let me start with the new approaches overview. So what we call calculation shift. So we have to uh, uh, reconstruct the uh, uh, system of the calculation and the measurement of the PV panel for such kind of new applications. But first of all, uh, classical PV calculation or measurement is made based on the arithmetic with trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, theta, uh, tangent. However, uh, the uh, new uh, approach may require vector computations. And uh, okay, this is a, a famous uh, illustration uh, for every uh, PV students that uh, uh, explain about the position of the sun. And uh, we usually use absolute ground coordinates to uh, uh, explain the position of the sun and impacts by the sun. However, uh, for the VIPB, uh, we prefer to use a local coordinate system that is frequently used in the car industries. And sometimes, uh, it is not the uh, case of the vehicles, but when we apply it, uh, to the airplane, airplane uh, the PV panel on the wing of the airplane, uh, we have to accept that the, uh, uh, the uh, solar panel rotate three-dimensionally, uh, pitch and roll and yaw. And uh, uh, this is based on the local coordinate, and this is the requirement of the new shift of the calculation. And this sum, uh, table summarizes uh, the entire uh, change, entire update to the uh, uh, calculation shift. And uh, it is based on the, uh, some kind of basic, uh, basic math, uh, arithmetic to the vector, coordinate system, uh, local coordinates, and sky model, non-uniform shading hemisphere, uh, sphere sky based on matrix. Uh, classical model uh, using the uh, shading ratio, that is scalar. And for partial shading, and uh, uh, we need to uh, establish a model based on the probability and accept accepted values. And the uh, shade of PV cells and modules. Uh, we have to think about the uh, uh, curved surface, so some kind of interaction. And uh, uh, differential geometry uh, will be really helpful uh, to understand the behaviors. And stress calculation. For a typical flexible PV model, PV module, uh, is based on the uh, model by some kind of uh, uh, thin plate, bending thin plate. So the uh, uh, 
in, uh, it is always better uh, to reduce the thickness of the solar cells. However, uh, when we uh, look at the uh, three-dimensional curved surface on the car uh, roof, it is uh, 3D curved and double curved surface. So uh, in this case, bending model cannot be applied at all. Uh, instead, uh, we have to think about buckling and compression. So the uh, uh, mechanical uh, design of the uh, VIPB is completely different from the uh, typical flexible PV modules. And ray orientation is a cosine in the classical model. But the, uh, uh, since all entire I mean, calculation is ma uh, made by uh, vector calculations, it is much more convenient to use inner product. And angular response, uh, in other words, IAM, uh, for uh, classical model, we use simple IAM curve uh, as a function of the incident angle. But for uh, vector calculation, we may need four tensor or uh, nested matrix uh, to characterize uh, the angular response. So uh, we need some kind of a completely change, completely update, but these updates will be powerful uh, to handle with a non, I mean, ideal uh, shading environment and in any shape. Then, then uh, let me start the uh, producible uh, testing in any way. So uh, the keywords that show must go on. We need to look for a practical compromise. So you may remember uh, the entire model cannot be applied to the curve surface. One conclusion uh, we, can answer, uh, we, uh, we may answer, it is impossible to test. But it is not the work for the uh, uh, standardization people. We have a responsibility to look for some kind of practical compromise. So how did I do it? And uh, this was helped by uh, one of the Chinese company, uh, Nanjing AGG Energy, uh, to uh, provide uh, a standard curved module uh, for uh, uh, many, uh, for not many, but the, uh, for 19 uh, research institutes and testing laboratory in the world. So uh, we asked some kind of common platform uh, for comparing the test result in any way. And uh, uh, I visited, uh, I knocked at door to several PV manufacturers, especially all the PV manufacturers in, in Japan, and uh, the, uh, the answer was no. They could not I mean, uh, uh, provide the module uh, uh, from uh, the requirement of the standard, uh, standard people. But the only exception was uh, Nanjing AGG Energy. And they succeeded uh, use, uh, to uh, produce a module, heavily curved module, using MWT technologies. Uh, I think that I mean, that technology came from the UNSW. So uh, this is a summary uh, of the test result. Uh, I picked up uh, several uh, testing laboratories uh, who disclosed uh, some kind of condition of the uh, uh, solar simulators. And uh, uh, so you may find the uh, blue square, it is a flat. And uh, uh, red triangle, it is a curved module, but the uh, uh, radius of the curvature is was three meters. And the uh, green one, is the radius of curvature was uh, two meters. And uh, circle disk of the orange, radius of curvature was one meter. So you may find uh, we have, we had some kind of biased uh, errors. So a kind of a systematic errors uh, in the measurement, something like this, especially in the uh, radius of one meter of the module. Except for uh, uh, two measurement result, that is the outdoor measurement and collimated solar simulator measurement. But again, uh, the typical solar simulator is not a collimated one. And uh, uh, we decided we uh, try to seek for uh, some kind of requirement of the solar simulator and the requirements of the curve uh, shape uh, to keep uh, the uh, tested uh, result will be acceptable. So again, if you see uh, three meters, of the radius of the curvature, uh, the error is less than 0.5%. Mm -hmm. 
This may be accepted uh, in the typical range of the reproducibility. Then uh, the next SAMI project is uh, clarify the requirement of the solar simulator and uh, a measurement. And uh, uh, thanks to the contributions and uh, uh, effort by testing laboratories, we reached the answer. Uh, the error of the measurement was caused by the variation from the uh, light source. So for example, uh, the curved surface uh, has a less distance in the uh, top uh, of the surface. So it, this particular solar cell received more sunlight than the others. And uh, 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 calculation or detailed analysis uh, for uh, uh, calculated error due to such kind of the uh, uh, variations uh, was expected uh, was uh, almost uh, uh, 45 line to the uh, calculation and measurement relationship. So uh, it is apparent uh, the only uh, thing uh, is to clarify the range of the variation due to the di uh, uh, distance from the uh, light source to any point in the module. And the uh, new uh, protocol was now uh, uh, published, not, uh, not published, uh, disclosed. And right now, uh, the uh, round two, second round of the round robin project is uh, uh, con uh, uh, conducted uh, uh, again by uh, 19 uh, research laboratories and uh, 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 testing, uh, uh, testing laboratories. And this is a blind test. So the, uh, uh, I do not know about the test result. Uh, the test result uh, will be disclosed after the entire testing laboratory doing indoor test finished the measurement. Then we will check if our, our protocol was correct or not. If it is validated, it will be some kind of the, uh, it will be published uh, as the uh, uh, testing method of the curved module. So, uh, modeling and outdoor power. And again, uh, the outdoor power is complicated as perovskite I mean, devices, but it is uh, calculated. And uh, uh, fortunately, it is calculated different from perovskite uh, uh, based on the uh, geometrical calculations. And uh, for almost flat plate, uh, flat model, uh, the angular response is uh, actually symmetrical. It is a cosine rule. However, for the curved module, it is not actually symmetrical. And the uh, uh, profile is, not, is far from the cosine curve uh, in this particular I mean, orientation. And again, uh, the slope of the response uh, was influenced by the ratio of the direct sunlight. And uh, the entire uh, diffuse sunlight, like the uh, rainy days and cloudy days, uh, the angular response is almost a uh, Lambertian. So uh, it can be calculated, but the calculated result is not symmetrical. So this is why that means we need some kind of the uh, new testing method uh, for the two-dimensional uh, angular response. And uh, one of the uh, questions raised from the uh, test laboratory is if uh, uh, the new testing, uh, testing protocol uh, that is developed for reproducibility among test laboratory was the real performance in outside or not. So uh, actually, uh, this was I mean, done by the uh, University of Miyazaki. And uh, our conclusion is that uh, flat, for flat plate, indoor tests equal outdoor operation in principle. But uh, for curved PV, indoor test is not or less uh, than uh, less performance uh, than the outdoor uh, operation. And it is inherently. And please look at this chart. And uh, this I mean, uh, area uh, corresponds to the, uh, the uh, measurement of the PM. 
And uh, this I mean, uh, purple line uh, corresponds to the expected power output, assume that the uh, module is flat. And green line uh, is the uh, curve after curve corrections. And, uh, but the uh, correction should be transparent and simple so that the everyone uh, can cal calculate uh, with the level of the Excel functions. So it is not complicated model, but it, it is Excel level calculations. And uh, uh, the gap between the flat and the curved model was mainly seen in the field factor FF, specifically the ratio of the IPM and ISC. So this is entirely mismatching loss, current mismatching loss. So uh, this means that uh, it is possible uh, to model and correct uh, by a simple calculations. And uh, I frequently mentioned about the differential uh, geometry. And what is differential geometry? And uh, actually, uh, this is the work of one of the students uh, to explain uh, they are newcomers in the, in the laboratories. So it is a student's job. But I think that I mean, it is excellent I mean, uh, summary of this I mean, approach. Uh, for example, uh, if we know uh, the measurement uh, curved uh, surface, uh, possibly by the measurement by a CMM, coordinate measuring machine, or some kind of modeling of the uh, uh, curved surface, then uh, what uh, he did is to mesh on the curved surface. In this particular case, uh, the module is a uh, uh, six by six cell uh, configurations, and each cell has a division of 10 by 10. So a uh, 60 by 60 uh, mesh was created along the uh, curved surface. And number three is a, a tangent surface. Uh, in other words, surface element. Surface element may be calculated by a central uh, differentiated method. And after that, uh, these SU and SBV was used for calculation of the normal vector. And if we know about the normal vector and area of the surface element, uh, after uh, calculation of the inner product of the ray vector, it is possible to uh, and, and integrate then to dimensionally, it is possible uh, to calculate the entire uh, 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 solar irradiance onto the each surface element. And again, each surface element may have a different value of uh, uh, the irradiance. And again, one thing that he lost is that the, uh, this is a flat, but the, uh, each surface area is sloped. So that we have to think about, uh, about some kind of correction or the, or about the horizon uh, to I mean, cut the uh, uh, irradiance from the hemispherical sky. So how do you measure, how do you evaluate the hemispherical sky uh, in, in view of the shading? So to that purpose, I used five uh, planometer measurement for the measurement of the uh, uh, solar irradiance on the car roof. So why we use, why five planometer was needed? The reason is simple. The measurement and experiment will be done by one of the drivers. And the drivers, uh, driving course of the drivers and driving time of the drivers are biased. So we definitely need non-biased uh, measurement. And uh, uh, these, I mean, redundant five axes, QYX, uh, Q, uh, uh, QX minus, QY minus, for example, will be used to detect some kind of error of the modeling. So if the error contains a mistake, even though it looks like I mean, uh, explained the uh, completed uh, result of our driving, we have a lot of cases that the error, uh, the model was wrong. But uh, using the uh, redundant measurement in orthogonal for axis uh, reveal that the model may contain errors. So uh, every modeling people uh, should be very careful about their uh, model 
contains a mistake, and uh, uh, we uh, try to uh, every effort to reveal this kind of the major uh, errors and uh, some kind of programming bugs. So uh, redundant four axis and five axis measurement w was uh, found useful to reveal such kind of errors, potential errors. And after the uh, uh, measurement of the uh, fish eye images by videos, then that the next step is to create some kind of the uh, uh, matrix form. And uh, uh, what we did is filtering uh, to uh, avoid noises and finalization uh, to differentiate b uh, between the sky image and buildings image, shading images. Then uh, this I mean, uh, 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 fish eye, eye picture is converted to the polar uh, coordinate systems and generates some kind of histogram. Uh, as a function of the uh, orientation and grazing angle. Grazing angle uh, is a, uh, correspond to the sun height. Then, uh, cons uh, considering the, uh, it is some kind of a histogram, and we have some kind of bins of the orientation angles and elevation angles. And the, uh, uh, the number of the frequency of the uh, data is counted as the element of the matrix. So this is what we call uh, aperture matrix. So aperture means the, uh, uh, if uh, the element is entirely uh, non-shaded, it will be one. Well, if it is shaded, it will be zero. So, and, uh, uh, so uh, one of the advantage of uh, aperture matrix is that the simple average of E equal to sky view factors that is frequently used for the uh, calculation of uh, the solar ir irradiance. And also, uh, we validated, uh, uh, well, we, we compared uh, the calculated result to the measurement uh, using ZHI, QZ, uh, and other four uh, redundant I mean, measurement results. And uh, uh, driving in the downtown and open zones, as a function of the sky view factors and compare each component. And although uh, we have still we have some kind of several errors like this, uh, the overall trend was the same uh, to the uh, 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 cal calculated one without any biased uh, uh, result. And uh, but uh, the problem is the shading, and, uh, partial shading, so that the uh, shadows onto the roof sometimes complicated, for example, uh, by the shadow of the trees. This is what we call the partial shading, and that partial shading frequently moves. So uh, in the time, uh, the pattern of the partial shading varies very quickly. So uh, we have to think about the impact by the partial shading. And before doing the uh, detailed calculations, and so this means that me, uh, we had uh, 20 times of the failure of the uh, analysis. Uh, it is important uh, to uh, categorize or classify the type of the partial shading or some kind of mismatching loss. The first one is parked in the sky. Uh, we have no partial shading, but the uh, uh, mismatching is um, uh, uh, affected by the curve shape. And the second case is a partial shading while parking. And uh, again, uh, Australia, the car direction, car side of the Australia is the same to Japan, so I, it can be applied to the Australia case, but it may not be applied to the uh, other presentations. But the, uh, mainly, uh, side of the uh, car is shaded by trees or other uh, street signs or other, I mean, uh, low height shading object. So uh, the counter of the partial shading or probability partial shading is something like that. But as soon as the car starts to move, the uh, main I mean, uh, behavior of the partial shading moves like this, in this direction. So counter plot is something like that. 
So uh, we have to think about these three differences to think about the uh, designing uh, the robust, I mean, uh, configuration of the, of the PV module against the partial shading. So I, and again, uh, we have uh, partial shading is too complicated, and it is convenient to use the probability model. And like the shading probability, uh, we use the uh, uh, fisheye camera. But the, uh, on the only difference is that we, uh, we uh, the uh, image processing uh, extract some kind of outlines of the shading object. Uh, and when the uh, sun passes these outlines, then partial uh, shadows drops onto the uh, uh, car body. So uh, again, it is also possible to generate some kind of the histogram. But one exception is that the, uh, uh, in some situations, especially in Japan, we have many cables. And these power cables has a lot of problems in view of the partial shading. So uh, different from other areas, we have some kind of special case of the uh, uh, power cable. And uh, as soon as uh, we check the experimental result and uh, we apply the uh, probability model because it is too complicated to direct ap application of the image, uh, the measured result and calculated result uh, matched very well. So I think that the, this I mean, approach will be appropriate. So finally, uh, we are going to go to the energy rate at last. So energy rate is especially important in simplicity and transparency because it is a background of the subsidy and carbon offset. So again, uh, the probability model uh, will be uh, useful. And uh, uh, we apply some kind of uh, accumulated logistic curve to the same I mean, uh, feature images. And one thing we have to think about is that the, uh, it is not actually symmetrical, because the uh, shading object does not exist in uh, front of the car. Otherwise, the car will be crushed. So, so shading object mainly distributed in the side of the cars. So we have to think about the uh, uh, non symmetrical distribution. But it is possible to ap uh, approximate by uh, cumulative logistic curves that is frequently used for in many areas of the engineering. And uh, also, fortunately, uh, this is a strong uh, each parameter of the uh, uh, logistic curve uh, is a strong function of SVF, sky V factors. Then, uh, after several discussions, uh, we agreed uh, to have three zones that people will be able to distinguish uh, easily. Maybe uh, some opinion is a five zone and four zone and six zones, but uh, my opinion was ne negative because I cannot differentiate six I mean, zones, but I can differentiate three zones. So lightly shady zone is the skirt uh, of the uh, cities, and uh, medium shady zone is a typical zones, uh, including residential area or area with the lower uh, levels of the building. And deep shady zone is a skyscraper and a bottom of the valleys in the mountain drive. Then uh, we can define a standard distribution of the shading uh, objects. However, uh, it is still it is not I mean simple and it is not transparent because the uh, uh, probability calculation may not be easy for many people. So uh, we try to uh, approximate by Excel level calculations. And uh, we apply several parameters, and we find latitude is the most appropriate uh, parameters to describe about the uh, difference from the uh, uh, non-shaded area. So uh, using the uh, 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 solar database and applying the solar database in Asian regions, Australia and Asia, 
and uh, uh, yes, Australia and Asia met PB Asia database. Uh, the uh, point was distributed along the uh, parabolic uh, lines. So, for example, it is I mean, uh, solar irradiance on the side. And as you imagine, uh, especially in the lightly shaded area, with the increase of the latitude, we have more irradiance on the side. However, it is not true to the deep shaded zone because the uh, uh, sun has already been shaded before reaching to the uh, uh, car side. So uh, the parameters, or parabolic, uh, parameters, parabolic function varies, but uh, it, they are entirely, I mean, uh, approximated by parabolic functions. Therefore, uh, this kind of the uh, Excel uh, sheet may be provided. So first, uh, input the uh, GHI, annual GHI in some specific area and uh, latitude. Then coefficient uh, are given in each case is a car roof of the right city, for, for example. Then uh, parabolic I mean, approximation calculate the correction factor. For in this example, 0 0.92. So uh, this 1,369 uh, 1, kilowatt hour per, per square meter multiplied by 0 0.92 will be 1,262 kilowatt hours uh, per square meter. And this is the uh, representative annual solar irradiance on the, onto the car body. And uh, the same approach may be uh, applied to the uh, uh, partial uh, shading. However, uh, the trend is a little bit complicated. And after uh, several trials, uh, searching for the representative parameters, and uh, we reached DNI GHI ratio uh, is the most appropriate to characterize the uh, partial shading loss. And again, uh, strong I mean, DNI means uh, more I mean, impact by partial shading. However, uh, the function is not as simple as uh, parabolic. So it is a little bit I mean, uh, a combination of the two functions. And uh, we use some kind of mean function, uh, 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 calculation by parabolic and calculation by linear. Then we will take the uh, uh, lower one. However, uh, it can be approximated. And another I mean, uh, issues uh, uh, in your mind, possibly, is a shading number, uh, no, no, string numbers. Yes, you are right. Uh, with the increase of the strings, uh, the impact of the partial shading will be reduced. So, so for typical and, and simple model, if you have two strings modules, the impact of the uh, partial shading will be half, ideally. It is not always ideal, but ideally it will be half. So this kind of the, uh, correction may be applied. So again, uh, it is given by the uh, Excel model. Uh, we will give DNI and GHI, and then calculate the uh, DNI-GHI ratio. Then with this I mean, calculation and apply to the functions, loss factor will be calculated. And again, uh, compared with the uh, case of, of the, uh, total shadows, the impact of the uh, partial shadow is much less. So for this particular example, 0 0.991. However, uh, the uh, impact by the case of the medium shaded zones with power cable, for example, uh, the impact increased 2.5%. So uh, we cannot ignore the power cables and the trees uh, in such cases. Not yet, unfortunately. Uh, this is a correction of the curved safe. And uh, uh, what we need is the invention of the two-dimensional uh, angular responsibility, angular response of the curved module. But again, it is extremely hard to develop. We have a lot of I mean, uh, measurement point, and even uh, one dimensional IAM in the flat module was not successful. So it is a very high challenge, uh, but extremely important, because uh, it is possible to calculate 
statistically, so in this particular case, uh, the x-axis is the loss by uh, uh, mismatching by uh, uh, curved surface. And y-axis is the uh, uh, ratio to the flatness. And again, it varies. Uh, we calculated 61 curved surfaces, su su surfaces and 14 cell sizes. So again, with the reduction of the cell size, uh, it is po uh, we have more chances to I mean, uh, cover, enti cover entire I mean, uh, zone of the curved area. However, again, it is widely scattered. So a statistical approach is not inappropriate to apply. So sadly say, I regret to say, not yet. And uh, it is up to the challenge of uh, uh, standardization researchers scattered in the world. And again, they work voluntarily. And uh, uh, some help uh, from the research sections will be really helpful. And again, if you succeed uh, to uh, invent this kind of the uh, uh, measurement, you can publish by academic paper at first, then propose to the standardization. But in any way, in this particular area, although it is extremely important, I have to say, not yet. So finally, uh, uh, about to um, finish my presentation, advanced computation for the performance. And it is an outcome of our, uh, of our activities. So, some of you uh, realize that the, uh, uh, both uh, non-symmetric shading environment can be uh, uh, calculated, can be treated by matrix and vectors, and curved surface can be calculated and uh, computed by vectors. So why not? Entire calculations should be done by vectors. And uh, yes, this is possible. But the problem is uh, uh, any differential geometry calculation takes a long, long time computation time. So our idea is to uh, make some kind of catalog of each of several uh, of typical I mean, curved surface. And uh, uh, this can be characterized by uh, four tensors. And once it is provided, uh, the rest of the calculation is really quick. So what is the uh, uh, four tensor or nested matrix? Uh, that matrix is a matrix of the uh, uh, point, each point, uh, uh, each I mean, surface areas. And each surface area contains a I mean, uh, uh, matrix of the two-dimensional uh, angular response. So uh, it is a nested matrix, and in other words, four tensors. And oh, once we have this kind of the calculations, the entire vector-based computation is very quick. And uh, this kind of the idea may be applied to the advanced analysis on BIPB and uh, uh, airplane uh, powered by uh, photovoltaic and complex uh, curved surface in the vehicles and the ship and other I mean, uh, transportation and uh, some kind of wavy PVRAs in the valley or in the gauges affected by non-uniformity and affected by curved surface. And all entire I mean, uh, research is currently done by University of Miyazaki. And why not challenge my university? So acknowledgement is the research work for NEDO and the standardization work by uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, Japan. Finally, this is our university, University of Miyazaki. Uh, it is one of the local universities in Japan, in the southern island. So it is a semi-tropical area. And we have a lot of training course in the uh, uh, beach running four kilometer like UNCW, and also trail running course, 10 kilometer long gauge, uh, in three kilometers distance. And most importantly, uh, since we are local university, we have 
excellent foods. Especially uh, Miyazaki beef, uh, the champion beef, for three years. Fortunately, unfortunately, uh, we have uh, beat it by Kagoshima beef, but beef in Miyazaki is really excellent. Thank you for your attention and any question to answer. Please ask me. Yes, please. Yeah, question. Um, how the, the manufacturers um, mm -hmm. get involved in uh, standardization, like how you help them design and manufacture the more efficient solar cars? OK, uh, actually, yeah, it is easy. Uh, the only requirement I ask for any newcomers for the standardization work is to respect IEC code and conduct. So uh, it is uh, some kind of uh, uh, rule of the, uh, so for example, respect of the uh, IEC copyright or respect other, industry, uh, 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 other people from the industry, something like that. Uh, kind of some kind of ethical rules. But uh, I prefer uh, to respect two words, again, fair and scientific. And especially for the people from the industries, I ask them, uh, your function is not eliminate to other, in, uh, uh, other companies. Other companies should be equally uh, compared, e uh, equally I mean, treated. But uh, it is very likely we have some kind of violent discussions. And it is common in the standardization table. But uh, the, judge, the judge should be done by scientific. If it is not scientific, you will be lost. Yeah, you will beat it. Uh, so, uh, especially PT600 has an open door policy. And uh, if you agree to respect the uh, IEC code and conduct, and you can uh, Google search the IEC code and conduct, then email me. You will be listed in the uh, email list. And uh, usually we have two web meetings uh, in, in a month, regular web meeting in a month. But fortunately, unfortunately for uh, Australian people, uh, the meeting should be worldwide. And uh, Sydney is one of the worst I mean, area for the international collaborations. <laughs> so uh, the meeting time is I mean, uh, 23 uh, to 24 in JST. So this means 1 to 2 a.m. in Sydney. <laughs> so <laughs> if you accept this I mean, rule, dinner rule, why not? I will always welcome. Yes, please. Thanks, uh, sorry, please wait for a moment. Yes, he's the first. Yeah, thanks, so, doctor, for the nice um, talk. I have a similar question with OER. Mm. Uh, how do you think the uh, investment interest from the PV manufacturer, manufacturer uh, mm -hmm. for the solar car uh, mm. application, mm. and uh, what type of uh, like solar cell do you think will be the most successful I see. in in the future solar car application? Okay, uh, this is the excellent questions, and uh, let me I talk about the fact. We ha uh, we have two facts. One is, uh, so you may know Zono Motors in Germany. Yeah. Yes. So uh, actually, uh, it is uh, really bad news. Zono Motors stopped the research and development and production uh, to the VIPV and solar EV for passengers cars. And, but they continue uh, to provide the uh, uh, VIPV for heavy duty uh, vehicles like buses and uh, trucks and the trailers. So uh, please allow me to I mean, ask you, uh, uh, to return to the asking your question. So do you think, why? I think the heavy duty uh, vehicles have mm. a, a much larger surface to mm. apply, uh, mm. deploy the uh, solar module. Mm. That, that means you will mm. generate more power during okay. the, yeah. Yes, you are right. And uh, it is crucial uh, that the uh, uh, it's crucial to think about two things. One is real 
benefit to users. And it is definitely true that the, uh, in uh, every I mean, area, including Europe and Japan and the United States, uh, we uh, thought uh, uh, we had a dream in the passenger's cars in two years ago. But right now, uh, we uh, uh, find that the heavy duty vehicles has more chances. And I'm now deeply involved in the uh, uh, PV panel on the truck. So uh, think about the real benefit for the users. And I mean, standardization will help. Uh, we provide such kind of the fair and scientific scale to compare uh, the kind of the benefit. And the second thing is that I mean, we have to always think about the technology risk. And actually, uh, the reason why uh, uh, some the motor failed in the business in the passenger's car is not disclosed. So this is my own opinion, and this is my feeling. I think uh, they failed the uh, management of the technology risk. And uh, uh, I found the uh, technology by Zono Motors are really excellent, especially uh, in the uh, uh, solar panel made by injection molding. Maybe it is a kind of CFRP, but they, uh, they made uh, the car body simultaneously for, uh, with the uh, uh, module. So uh, it will be reduced the cost dramatically. But I wondered if integrated car body satisfied the requirement of safety or not. So CFRP is an excellent material and actually used for the airplanes. However, what I am really bit concerned about the crash, safety after the crash. So if you are I mean, uh, enjoying the cycling or road bikes, uh, you may see. Uh, and I, I will give you some kind of advice. Please do not try to buy the carbon road bikes. It is uh, lightweight. And it is high I mean, dynamics, excellent. But once uh, you drop uh, from the uh, road bike, uh, it is weak to the impact. And uh, I mean, uh, the cross section of some kind of uh, crack is something like a blade. So you may be injured by your bones, but if you drive on the uh, uh, carbon road bike, blood. <laughs> so a kind of this kind of some, uh, failure may happen, but again, it is my feeling, without any evidence. But in any way, technology risk will be really important before heavy investment. And uh, heavy duty truck is something like uh, uh, applicable for many areas. So this is why that to me they chose. Yeah, but for the heavy duty uh, mm. vehicles, mm. Does, do the vehicles require much more um, uh, energy during the like drive Excellent. comparing to passenger mm. cars? Yes, you're right. And actually, uh, one of your uh, colleague, Ned Ikis uh, uh, uh compared about the, uh, uh, the case of the heavy duty trucks and the passenger cars. And please, uh, I let me advise you to uh, discuss with the net. But uh, the real fact is that the, uh, the current uh, application of the heavy duty trucks is not the engine. It's not for the engine. Just for refrigerations and ventilations. Then, and uh, it is not necessary. Maybe it's 500 watts or 300 watts will be necessary. But again, a uh, uh, distinct benefit to save the oil, because the uh, uh, oil is consumed by some kind of the uh, uh, air conditioning and uh, uh, alternators. And these two devices for trucks are has extremely low efficiency. So this is a kind of advantage, and this is why uh, many people is now moving to the uh, application of the heavy duty trackers, and it is real benefit to the users. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. 
Yes, uh, Professor Araki, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Um, passenger cars, I mean, uh, among the global uh, car companies, Japanese car manufacturers are more, more you know, active, I right. believe that. So, for example, like Toyota, do they have any certain timeline for passenger car VIPB? I frequently, okay. Uh, it is a really good question. I frequently ask the Toyota, but they will not answer anything. But the fact is that the, uh, uh, they always I mean, uh, uh, provide the option of the solar panel in some kind of the uh, uh, typical uh, cars, like uh, BZ4X in the EV and the Prius. And uh, still, uh, uh, I cannot I mean, disclose I mean, in detail, but we still have some kind of the good relationship to Toyota Motors, and uh, we help the uh, develop development of, uh, for Toyota Motors. And so uh, they are really eager. And maybe uh, another uh, uh, opponent of the Toyota Motor, uh, which I think is Hyundai in Korea. They are also passionate uh, to uh, load the uh, VIP panel. But unfortunately, LG stopped the production, and I think that they are now seeking for the uh, PV partners. But they are really passionate to the uh, VIP application, as far as we discussed. Oh, it's promising. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for a great talk. Um, Given the issues that you're seeing with the non-collimated light source in testing, do you see a move towards outdoor testing for the standard? Okay, this is a me key question for the practicality. And uh, I did not uh, disclose uh, some kind of the criteria uh, for this I mean, uh, model uh, because, because of some kind of the uh, uh, permissions that this will be uh, YouTube. But uh, anyway, uh, we had some kind of the big discussion in the standardization yesterday and the day before yesterday. And a uh, uh, proposal uh, from us uh, seems to be accepted. So that I think that now is a good chance to disclose now. OK, uh, again, uh, the reason of the uh, 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 system loss it was uh, the distance. That, uh, so uh, we need to control the distance. So uh, it's, uh, typically, uh, the ratio of the L and delta. And uh, uh, so uh, the equation is uh, L bar delta is a function of the uh, size of uh, light source and module. So it is not very um, complicated calculations. It is a simple um, I mean, uh, similarity of the uh, triangles, but again, uh, equation is, itself is simple, and we believe it worked. And uh, this particular I mean, plot, this particular plot is, was made using this kind of a triangle expansion model, geometrical model, and it is simple. And we, we are surprised. Uh, it is almost on the line, although it is too simplified. So I hope that I could answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, let's thank Dr. Kenji Karaki again for the excellent talk. Thank you. <laughs>